Many equestrians dream of keeping their horses right in their backyards. In this episode of Barn Stories, we learn what the reality of that arrangement can be. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prins, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We've searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. Keeping horses at home is a dream for many of us. After all, what could be nicer than looking out your kitchen window to see your herd peacefully grazing in the soft morning light? The essay in this episode, however, focuses on the less idyllic moments and the hidden costs that can come with having your horses at home. I'm a horse person who lives in an urbanized area, so I've always had to rely on boarding barns that were a significant distance from my house. Friends often ask if I wouldn't be happier with a property I could keep horses on. But I know how much work that can be, and honestly, the drive to the barn is a better option for me. But then again, having horses in your backyard can come with sweet rewards, as the owner in this essay discovers. So who knows, maybe one day I'll look out my kitchen window and see a horse. So let's listen to Moment of Truth, written by Beth Jarvis and read by Taylor Autumn. For as long as my husband and I have owned horses, we've dreamed of having a home where we could keep our two boys right in our backyard. About a year ago, we finally bought the perfect property, with a grassy paddock, big trees, and room to ride, a rare find here in the Arizona desert. It looks like horsey paradise. Chester, our friendly little quarter horse, was hand-raised by people after his mom died when he was nine weeks old. He can't imagine that someone wouldn't be charmed by him, and most people are. Colby, our beautiful Pinto, is a bit different. He was seven years old when we bought him seven years ago, and he's very nervous and reactive. Colby is sensitive and quite talented. He won his division at a local show series in English Pleasure. And then a few years later, won reserve champion for the state in a lower-level dressage. But... Getting Colby to relax and trust us has felt like one long project. He often steps back with caution and doubt when someone approaches, and he prefers not to be touched. He's a sweet horse, but he doesn't seem to have much faith in people. Of course, our horsey paradise comes at a price. Since we've bought this place, I've picked up many more hours at work just to offset some of the costs. And this property requires much more time to care for than the home we had before. It seems like rest has become a thing of the past. My vacation days are spent catching up with the work at home. And there's never enough time to get everything done. In late December, I finally got myself a day off that did not have a list of major chores attached. At last, I thought... I get some time just to myself to relax. Naturally, it did not work out that way. I started the morning by sorting and putting away all the Christmas stuff, a lengthy and thankless job. And just as I had finally finished that, my daughter asked me to go grocery shopping, one of my least favorite chores. By the time I got home, it was already time to put the horses in. I hadn't cleaned stalls yet and the sun was starting to set, so I had to hustle out to the barn. I was irritated and feeling a little robbed of the relax thing. Suddenly, the demands of caring for this property, of keeping our horses at home, was just too much. The cost, the work, the time away from home, I was not feeling good about any of this. This schedule was definitely not okay. October is for horses. Horse Week, brought to you by Bowringer Engelheim, is back for its second year. October 9th through the 15th, 
2022. Don't miss a minute of the Horse Week action, including profiles of incredible equine athletes, storytelling that celebrates the horse-human bond, heartwarming tales of horse heroics, advice from world-class trainers, and more. Tune in from the barn, office, or the comfort of your couch. Equine Network is making it easy to watch the week-long celebration from any smart device. Visit horseweek.tv for more information or to watch your favorite features from 2021. I was digging around in Colby's stall, trying to get the cleaning done quickly, when I felt a faint puff of warm air on my arm. I looked up, and there was my Colbs, quietly standing next to me. I don't know how long he had been there, but it must have been at least a few minutes. He was very still. I stopped what I was doing and waited. After a few long heartbeats, my shy, nervous boy slowly and deliberately lowered his gorgeous head into my arms. I caught my breath. For him to choose to touch me at all was astounding. We stood there for a moment, and then he closed his eyes, breathed deeply, and relaxed. Suddenly, all that existed in my world was this sweet animal, his trust, his warm breath, and his brown eyes closed in contentment. The clock stopped ticking for me in the quiet breeze and the long light of the setting sun. This was definitely okay. Everything was very much okay. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.